Hello adventurers! My name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the 51st episode of our background series. Today we have a classic among classic in store for us. Not really for mechanical be well, mechanical benefits are there I suppose, um, and it is a really strong background, but I think it's become like more of a meme at this point. Just cause like the the idea of a of a PC with parents is kind of obscure. Like I don't know if I've ever played in a game where parents are involved. I don't think. Now that I'm actually thinking about it, I I don't think even the DMs I talk to have. I don't know. I should probably ask them outright and see. I don't, in, in any case, doesn't matter for the context of this video. Uh, but what does is today we're talking about the urchin, which is found in the player's handbook. And if you haven't checked out the other 50 odd videos and you'd like to see all of the backgrounds that Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition has to offer, you can check out the full playlist by clicking the little eye icon up top there or waiting until the end of the video and clicking on that end card screen. In any case, let's dive into the urchin by first going over its description. You grew up on the streets alone, orphaned and poor. You had no one to watch over you or provide for you, so you'll learn to provide for yourself. You fought fiercely over food and kept a consistent watch out for other desperate souls who might steal from you. Basically, you had a rough kid. Really rough. But now you're an adventurer trying to make something of yourself. Or destroy the world, or I don't know, up to you, really. Um, in any case, there's a lot you can do with this. Treat yourself as an emotionally damaged blank slate. And let's check out some mechanics here. Under skill proficiency, you gain a sleight of hand and stealth, both of which are quite useful in almost every scenario. Under tool proficiencies, you gain the disguise kit and thief tools, which are both super useful as well. And you get quite a few equipment, um, namely the small knife, map of the city you grew up in, a pet mouse, a token to remember your parents by, a set of common clothes, and a pouch containing 10 GP. Which is interesting, because you'd imagine urchins would be poor, but there you are with just as much gold as anyone else, and even more than a couple of them, so take from that what you will. But uh, it kind of goes without saying, these are some really good mechanics. Sleight of hand and stealth are both super useful in and outside of combat. Having the disguise kit in general is amazing, but add that in with thieves tools, which are about as useful as you want them to be, and man, you're cooking with fire. Um, however, it's going to be worth noting, you don't have either of them as equipment provided, so you're going to have to buy them, pick them up along the way, or find the components you need to make them, and that's up to your dungeon master's discretion, of course. In any case, let's move on to your feature. Uh, this one is called City Secrets. You know the secret patterns and flow to cities, and can find passages through the urban sprawl that others would miss. When you are not in combat, you and your companions you lead can travel between any two locations in the city twice as fast as your speed would normally allow. This is really interesting and really just nice overall. This is actually really similar with one of the Ravnican backgrounds we've gone over, uh, namely the, the, the Golgari Agent. So if you want to check out that video, it's much earlier on in the playlist and feel free to do that. Um, the, the Golgari Agent kind of replaces the Urchin in some ways. However, the Urchin is still better in terms of skill and tool proficiencies, at least I like to think so. So, yeah, check it out, see if it might interest you. If not, this is still a very strong choice. Um, the, another, another really good difference between the Undercity Paths that the Golgari Agent has and City Secrets that the Urchin has is the Urchin, it's almost guaranteed to be safe passage where in terms of the Golgari agent, it goes out of its way to say that it's not. So take from that what you will, and feel free to describe these paths however, however it is you'd like, but quicker travel 
is always a good thing. I can't think of a single instance where it wouldn't be great. Um, it can get around incurring penalties like exhaustion. Not to mention, if there's ever a time constraint involved, this is going to be super useful. I would also make an argument that you'd be able to figure out like where secret um, black markets would be, um, things of that nature, but that's kind of more so up to your dungeon master's discretion. In any case, let's move on to its suggested characteristics here. For this particular example, for the personality trait, I went with, I hide scraps of food and trinkets away in my pockets. Under ideal people, I help the people who help me. That's what keeps us alive, and that's a relatively neutral stance. Under Bond, I owe my survival to another urchin who taught me how to live on the streets, which is pretty cool. And under Flaw, it's not stealing if I need it more than someone else, which is a relatively loose moral code to say the least. Overall, this particular style of character would likely put far more stock in people than they would in any individual item. Um, as a direct result, they're not super materialistic. Uh, maybe they'd get along with the far travelers or the more nomadic backgrounds and people of whatever world you belong to. It's really interesting nonetheless, and naturally there's a lot of ways you can go with this. Uh, in terms of interesting plot hooks, you could get the parents involved. Uh, maybe the parents uh, drop them off at an orphanage or something along those lines uh, to escape some kind of... Um, political assassination or something of that effect and they're actually secretly a noble but I don't know play it out however you want there's certainly a lot of directions a dungeon master can take the urchin which is really nice even if it is a little bit of a meme now let's get to my personal thoughts on it I really like the urchin I think it's great um, from a mechanical perspective it's really really nice um, certainly better than the vast majority of the backgrounds in the player's handbook. At least as far as I can tell, it suits my playstyle quite nicely. And its feature is really good as well. I mean, what more can you really expect from a background? Um, the biggest complaint a lot of Dungeon Masters have is there's not a lot of ways you can kind of pull at this character's heartstrings, seeing as how they already lost their family, but you can always try reintroducing the family, maybe a long-lost brother, or something along those lines. Um, the suggested characteristics also provide tons of opportunity for Dungeon Masters to really sink their teeth into a character, so I don't know. Um, I've always been a firm believer that the Dungeon Master is more than capable of outthinking the character and has way more tools in their toolbox to do so. Who knows, maybe their parents get resurrected and want them to stay at home with them and provide the best life possible, and the urchin is forced to choose between that life or adventuring with the party. You know, there's a lot you can do with it. That being said, let me know what you think of the urchin down beneath in the comment section. Be sure to mention any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, story ideas, or even stories of your own down there as well. And if you'd like to get access to a free one-shot written by yours truly, please check out the guild hall and use code WELCOME to do so. That being said, I hope you all have a great day and as always, happy adventuring!